Hey guys, welcome back to another R3 Sense. In case you haven't noticed, there are more people here than usual. By double, in fact. Yeah, really? this proves to you that we actually do have some friends. <laughs> <laughs> and so, we do know people besides ourselves. Yeah, so. So, anyway, our very special guests this evening are our very good friends, Mike and Kitty. Or Mike and Kitty. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Am I Kitty today? You know what? You just sit there. <laughs> this Mike. is Mike, just in case there's any confusion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and probably nobody who has seen our videos even know that Mike and Kitty exist, <laughs> considering we only have 11 subscribers, and one of them is me. <laughs> So, um, so one, one of them is me. And one of them so. is you. So you, you've seen your own I videos. I'm one. I'm, I might be one. I'm impossible. I'm impossible. So, <laughs> right, yeah, there's, so there's three people who know who these people are. There leaves eight people out there who have no clue who these people are. But they are fellow YouTube stars. So don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't yeah, don't say like that. stars, but <laughs> no, it's not stars. So don't. if you would like to take a minute and introduce your channel to the to our friends um it's not really a channel just um it is a channel i guess it's the a name channel. of it well technically they're all channels yeah they're yeah. all channels okay well our channel if you well, want to call it that uh it's just a place where we can hang out and we do reactions to different videos like k-pop and you know horror type things that you would never want to see in real life and people send us videos and we react to them like when you see us looking at it, that's our first time looking at it, and you see our faces when we look at it. So that's about it. The channel goes by my name, Christina Pineset. Uh, might put a link in the description. I don't know um, if they yeah. know how to do that. And yeah, we will. <laughs> but today is a little different, guys, because yeah. you know, it's like you well, know. Well, it's the same for us. Like, it's gonna be different. <laughs> well, for them. it's different yeah, for us. Yeah. You know, yeah. But uh, we'll we have done a review, like. We haven't done a movie review ever, so. Um, well, this movie is definitely going to get four thumbs up. <laughs> four thumbs no. up. No. <laughs> I'm going to go halfway. Thank you. Just right here. <laughs> maybe. I'm here. I'm like, here. like the maybe gladiator here. thing. Uh, I'm going to say right here. Like, I'm going to say, uh, uh, oh, oh, no. Maybe kind of half limp, you know. Maybe. Yeah. Half chub. Half flaccid. Half, half chub. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, uh, this is the final uh, video in our series, the Batman original ones, and I know we're farther away, but it's Batman forever, so. Yeah. Um, oh, God, Joel, Joel, Joel Shoemaker, <laughs> what the bloody hell were you thinking? <laughs> okay, the first problem with this movie is within the five seconds. The first five seconds that it starts and you see the name Val Kilmer pop up. That's it? Right there. That's the first problem. <laughs> if that's going to give you any indication of where this movie review is going to go, in the first five seconds I already had an issue with it. <laughs> and yes, we've all seen this before. I haven't seen it for a long time. But, and then the name Joel Schumacher pops up and it's just downhill from there. So. And what's really horrible is... Tim Burton was connected to this movie. He was the producer. Well, could you well, really, you couldn't like throw any input into this. I mean, like, of course, it's a little bit. It's kind of like that one. It's always that one where you look at it and it's like, okay, this is going straight nowhere. For for it to be Tim Burton to be related to it. And after all the work he has done with previous Batman, it's just Batmans or Batmans, I'm not sure. But the previous ones before this, and then come to this, and you're like, okay, he's not directing, he's producing this time, so that's a little different off the bat. But you get a little bit more faith when you see that Jim Carrey is involved, right? Right. Tommy Lee Jones. You know, I don't, even I, Bob Comer, you know, I had high hopes for that because it's, about, it's Iceman, come on. But. Uh, uh, <laughs> 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hop in. Uh, I'm not necessarily a movie person. I don't know anything about directors or actors. I know the people by who they play. So I'm that person. I don't say Daniel Radcliffe. I say Harry Potter. So I'm that person. Um, <laughs> this I'm gonna let y'all get a little further into it. I just want to establish myself as that one movie virgin, basically, who doesn't know anything about anybody. So I have no biases towards or against any directors or producers. This is just me looking at it as a movie. I just want to establish that. You guys, please proceed. <laughs> Well, thank you, Katie. <laughs> Glad to know we're going to... Tonight. <laughs> You're going to learn some... It was my first, and they You're were not gentle. Tonight. They were not you gentle. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> You're going to learn some directors by the time this is over. Right? <laughs> my goodness, they were not gentle. <laughs> Whoo. Woo. <laughs> but I can't say that this was, you know, all that bad. Like, this is... <laughs> it wasn't all that bad. I can't, oh, I can't put, oh, I won't say it's not j bad, but I'm just saying it's not all that bad, you know. In comparison to past, you know, Batman movies and that he has Batman done, movies. you know, this does fall short, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is. There were some major glaring flaws with this one, mostly due to. Mostly with acting and storyline and directing but there were some highlights too True. mostly jim carrey mm -hmm. definitely yeah. i mean he's over the top and he's jim carrey he made the movie watchable but for me. and basically he basically every other jim Car carrey character ever yeah you're just throwing a riddler suit on there pretty and much an orange hair yeah an orange hair orange hair so exactly and uh, a point that Kitty made about Jim Carrey in this movie and his choice of outfits, or the costumer's choice of outfits. He chose those outfits. He chose them himself. I swear. I, I love Jim Carrey. That's one actor I do know him by name. Because if I see that he's going to be in a movie, it makes me want to watch it, even though I don't particularly care for movies. Because, I don't know, I'm ADD or something. I, I can't. I'm too distracted, so I can't sit down for a long period of time to focus on something, but I can focus on him. So And you definitely focus on his junk today. Oh my god. Oh, every, she was just there straight. was always a penis in the shot and I was just like straight dig action. I'm not comfortable with seeing his penis two inches from my face. It's like it's not comfortable. But yeah, um while we were watching the movie I definitely did um a lot of times retort that I feel personally that there th I feel that they had a certain direction they were going in the movie and a lot of times I feel that he improvised to make it more entertaining mm -hmm. like the ending scene for instance like who is the Batman I feel like they had something different written in the script <laughs> something like he's he tells that Bruce Wayne is the Batman but because he's now considered insane it, it disqualifies him as being yeah. credible but instead, I feel Jim Carrey took it in a completely different direction, like he would, and he has made a costume from straps, and he's, I'm the Batman, and he's, oh my god, I feel like that was all Jim Carrey, that was, the, but, the costumes, the hair, the outfits, everything, I feel, having, to, I think they gave him creative control, because it did make the movie better, and I, I feel they knew that. So. Probably. He, d he does that a lot in his movies, you know. Right. He does a lot of improvising. Yes. And he does you a know, damn good Just watch job any of it. the outtakes from Liar yeah. Liar. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Or <laughs> Kick Ass 2. I mean, he improvised his entire part in that movie. <laughs> I don't even think he had a script. Or it's yeah. like, okay, just here's, get, get here's the basic <laughs> thing. Just just go for it. Yeah, you yeah. know, the point is just go with it. Just go with it. Yeah. But, you know, I can't say that Jim Carrey the movie by himself. Because I do feel like. Uh, even though I have several problems with how they portray Two Face in this one, you know the whole oh he got burned by acid, but his whole skin turned purple, still bothers me. Yeah, like that still bothers me that his whole skin is purple. And he got burned by acid. Like shouldn't there be some blood or scarred flesh? I guess that's what they was going with. Cause yeah, 
I feel like they I don't know what Tommy Lee Jones to be was a great compliment to Jim Carrey, and which made them both like carry this whole movie. Like without them and their comedy and the things mm -hmm. that they did that were off the wall, I don't believe that this movie would have made it as far as it did. Mm -hmm. No, no, it wouldn't have. Definitely. Not. You know, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I have <sighs> Jim Carrey was great, mm -hmm. but we've already established this. Tommy Lee Jones while in his own right is an amazing actor, he's always, you know, he always high, raises the bar in everything that he's in. Sure. I have a really, really, really huge problem with them casting Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face slash Harvey Dent. Nope. <laughs> Who was Harvey Dent? Harvey Dent was a district attorney of Gotham, in which they showed that clip of him in the courtroom when he was burned. But as we've mentioned in two videos past of uh, Batman, I don't know if maybe it was just because Joel Schumacher was the director and not Tim Burton, but if you recall in Batman, Harvey Dent was black. Ah. I forgot all about that. I know, I know how, nothing about that. How can they go <laughs> from Billy D. Williams to Tommy Lee Jones? Now I know D and Lee won, <laughs> and they're both spelled the same, but I'm sorry, continuity wise, even if Billy D. Williams can't come back and do the, the movie, because maybe he didn't want to do it because Tim Burton wasn't directing it. Couldn't they have got another black actor to play him? <laughs> Actually, he very much wanted to come back. He was very pissed that they didn't hire him. What? And he refuses to work with Joel Schumacher now. Oh, because, God. yeah, he was actually really mad because he was contracted to play Two-Face. He was contracted for three movies and that his story arc was eventually going to turn into Two-Face. But they got rid of Tim Burton and... The studio said that that contract was full annoyed now because they changed directors, and which you know is a lie. But no, he was he he was very upset, and honestly, so am I, because and it's obvious that Michael is. <laughs> yeah. But I think it would have been interesting to see what he did with it. True. Yeah. You know, I mean, it would have it's been freaking Lando Calrissian. Come on. <laughs> it wouldn't have been such a a comical Two-Face, I don't think. Oh, no. But, but more menacing. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think it would been... It wouldn't have been so over the top. It would have been... I don't think he would have been as crazy yeah. as... And, you know, that is probably... That's probably the best explanation for why he's not. Because... What I was going to mention about the purple face, it's obvious that this movie was trying to stray away from the world that Tim Burton had set up. True, true. And this is going into a little bit more comic book, campy style. You know, yeah. not quite as campy as the 60s version, but not as dark as Tim Burton's. This was trying to look more like a comic book. It's bright, it's colorful, everything's huge in it. You know, everything is over dramatic. Right. And everything, and that's why. And something that I picked up on <clears throat> for the first time since I, when I rewatched this now, there was really a lot of homages and um, throwbacks to the 60s show. And I can appreciate the movie a lot more now, seeing that uh, they, they wanted to make a tribute to the 60s campy TV show slash movie. For instance, the car driving up the wall. Oh. Now, the car never drove up the wall in, in the show, but they had that scene of the people looking out their windows. And if uh. you recall from the movie, the 66 movie, they're crawling up the wall and people are looking out their windows. Yeah. And there's also some just sub subtle music cues from In the Overture that liken back to the Overture uh, from the 60s as well. Yeah. It's a something point. that I, I noticed this for the first time. Yeah. Very good point. <laughs> See, you guys know this because you guys 
much more experience than us because this is like one of our beginning things, Batman. Like we just came in when Tim Burton first started doing it, and mm -hmm. you know they would reach this and like, oh, another Batman. You know, when you're young, you're so excited to see more Batman because you don't get to see enough movie for your favorite superheroes. But when you grow up and you see it from different eyes, you know, and Batman is still one of my favorites, top tier, definitely. But to see this again, you know, as an adult and like really look at it, you know, through adult eyes and after all I learned about Batman, it's like you start seeing the difference of the world Tim Burton made of this could happen. This could be Batman, you know, you know, having Michael Keaton there as a funny yet, you know, suave Bruce Wayne and then have Val Kilmer come in as not so much the same. <laughs> I don't know the words to say <laughs> for what Val Kilmore was portraying as Bruce Wayne, but let's just say that it wasn't fully, it, it, it wasn't the same feeling, you know? Go ahead. Kim. I have a word or two. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. Oh, this one she was waiting on. Uh, <clears throat> that boy was lost. That's what he was. He was lost from the time we saw him. There was like several scenes like, oh my God, like, okay, where do I begin? Where do I begin? First of all, he was lost. Second of all, he was thirsty. Third off, in my eyes, from every other Batman, like from the original movies on through to like even Batman Beyond, like Batman now, he was just, he didn't fit in. Like I've always known Bruce Wayne to be a suave, sophisticated guy about his wits, always. Mm -hmm. Never thirsty. <laughs> right. <laughs> he was always, he was just, you know, for lack of a better term, he was cold on them hoes. So, with all that being said, um, <clears throat> I have never seen Bruce Wayne ever in my life go and, and is like, I'm going to quit being Batman. He stands up in a crowd and yells, I'm Batman. <laughs> Are you oh, kidding me? Man. You did, I have never seen a Batman so... <laughs> Not Batman. Like, I've <laughs> never seen it. There's this scene. Yes, exactly. That's the perfect There's word. this scene where he's sitting on the bed and like he, you can tell like he's trying to exude manly broodiness, but instead he just looks lost in his own brain somewhere. It looks like it looks like he's trying to figure out a math problem. <laughs> and the whole class is looking at him. That's what he looks like. Like the whole time, anytime, like, cause Batman is like a notorious brooder. Like, he always has that gaze where he's just like, hmm, he's just pondering the secrets of the universe. But this guy, this poor guy, he. Still better than George Clooney, though. <laughs> Why you gonna break that up, man? We... At I least George Clooney was funny at some point. When? I there's nothing funny him. about that movie. I laughed at him. Look, if it wasn't, I if he didn't that, mean to be comical, at least he kind of would. I mean, I laughed at Mr. This Freeze. guy, <laughs> this guy was just not Batman. I'm sorry. This he was, guy. He was funnier in the one episode of Friends that he was in than that entire movie. I'm not even. <laughs> but once again, I saw that as a kid. So this is, like, this isn't my first time seeing this movie. I uh, just want to put that out there. Uh, I saw this movie when I was a child. I don't remember what age, but I do remember seeing it.